It's a rainy night in Seattle this Thursday, but it's not a deterrent. The roof has has is covered up, and we're ready to go. These hardy fans, there's even a Philadelphia Eagles fan coming in. He's a Mariner fan. It's baseball time tonight as the Mariners and the Cleveland Indians wrap up their three-game series. This is the rubber match, and so glad you could join us. Dave Sims with you from this rainy Seattle this evening. What a pitching matchup we have this evening as the Mariners try to go 2-1 and one against the Cleveland Indians as we look at our Lexus pitching matchup. Felix Hernandez, the king, he's 1-1 one one with a 3.80 ERA. He's 5-3 and three in his career against Cleveland. He goes against Josh Tomlin. Tomlin's last outing, he had to come out of the bullpen because the starting pitcher got thrown out of the game for throwing in a Kansas City Royal. So that's part of our setup here tonight. The White Sox will be in tomorrow, but right now let's get you out to Jen Mueller. Well, Dave, you know, these Indians have an awful lot of power from the left side of the plate. But up to this point in the series, the M's pitchers have been able to keep that in check, particularly Jason Vargas throwing a gem last night. So what's the secret? Well, it turns out there really isn't one. I guess just executing good pitches. Um, that's pretty much what it's going to come down to in any situation, regardless of right-handed or left-handed in the lineup. And the lefties can do some damage. And... Um, you know, Coxman's hit here before, and um, it's just one of those things where you got to execute good pitches to get them out. And few are better at executing pitches than Felix Hernandez. He is on the mound tonight. Coming up next, it is first pitch and lineups here on Root Sports. The Mariners and the Indians coming up. We're ready to play ball here in Seattle, Washington. We're at Safeco Field. Glad you could join us, everybody. Dave Sims and Mike Flowers. First pitch from Felix Hernandez in there for strike one to Michael Brantley. 55 degrees here in Seattle. Raining outside. We are well protected inside. The roof extended. Felix Hernandez, Mike, last time out. Seven innings of seven hit two run ball and lost the game. Yeah, we've heard that story before, especially over the last couple of years. But I, I think one of the things that you have to appreciate about Felix is you'll never hear him complain about run support. You'll never hear him make any excuses about anything. And he will go hard. And I think the other thing is Eric Wedge certainly appreciates this young man because he pitches deep into the game every time that he goes out there. He's just unbelievable that way, just a grinder. 
And more times than not, we've seen that he will throw more pitches in the first couple of innings, and then after that, settle down. But working ahead of Brantley right away in a one-two count. Bounce it up there. Your point is well made. We've talked about this a lot. About hey man, he's out there to do his job. He does not break. It is unbelievable. I've talked to him a million times. No, 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 no. I gotta hey, I gotta do a better job. He only gave up four hits. You gotta do a better job. And and you know, sometimes after the games, you know, the guys will have their little speech ready for the bulk of the media. But you know, from both of us talking to him and seeing him, that's the way he really feels about it. He, he, he puts a lot on his shoulders, and more times than not, he goes out there and does his job. Great teammate. Heard a lot of good stories about him during spring training, taking guys out, young kids out, taking them out to dinner. Payoff pitch. Strike three called. Delayed call by Dan I. Assigned the one out. Mariners will take it. So will Felix. Kings Court in session tonight. Take a look at the rest of the Indian batting order. Well, following Brantley. After the punch out looking you have Kipnis and then it's Chu the former Mariner hitting third Santana with a home run in this series he will hit clean up after Kochman. Kelly Duncan hitting seventh off to a good start hitting 290 overall Hanahan former Mariner hitting eighth and then it's Jason Donald the leadoff hitter last night's game will hit ninth in tonight's game. Fouled off by Jason Kipnis the second baseman. Felix's numbers on the year. 3.80 ERA, 21 in the third innings pitch, 19 strikeouts. That's a good number, only four walks. He has given up one home run. Opponents average 247. Breaking ball. Down stepped it. Style by Kipnis has, has the bat parallel to the ground and then he gets into his ready position. If you think about it, it probably reminds you of Mickey Tendleton. Remember Mickey yeah, Tendleton? He used to lay it back like mm -hmm. that. Power hitter with the Detroit Tigers had some good years with them. 2 1. Indians won the first game of this series nine to eight. Mariners had an eight one lead and let it get away. And then last night, Jason Vargas was tough. Four one victory. Kings Court in session. New t shirts this year. Looking for another strikeout. I told Manny Active about that. I said, Dude, you know, the Kings Court's in session. What? <laughs> I said, You're going to see these guys in yellow t shirts. Carrying placards, and when you guys get the two strikes, you're going to be going screaming out the letter K. Okay. So I think British soccer game, or maybe Japanese baseball game. 2 2. Seattle, Seattle Sounders or Portland Timber soccer as well. They get after it hard as you look at Shin Su Chu, the own deck hitter. Felix 5 and 3 career against the tribe at 2.80 ERA. Payoff pitch. Fly ball left field backs up Figgins. Plenty of room. Take a look at the rest of the Mariner defense. An easy play for Figgins out in left field. In center, it'll be Michael Saunders. Each row in right. And on the infield, Kyle Seeger at third base. Ryan and Ackley up the middle. Ackley was at first because Smoke had a little bit of a hamstring issue, but Smoke back in the lineup and at first base. Miguel Olivo will do the catching tonight. Well, that was the game you were talking about, Dave. 107 pitches, seven innings again, just seven hits. Over the seven innings, three walks, six strikeouts for Felix against the A's. There's two. Looks at a breaking ball, strike one. Manny Acton talking about Felix and his advice to their hitters. He said, Hey, you hope he makes a mistake. You know he's going to be there for the long haul. You have to wait for your pitch and you better hit it. This is when, he, when you fall behind, all kinds of trouble. And he said, And actually, it's not about Felix when we play him, it's about our pitcher. He's got to hold the Mariners down. Go two. Stuff there. And I think for Felix, he has to be excited about this game tonight. Somebody different than the A's for him this year. He's faced the A's three <laughs> times. I had to get tired of looking at those guys, even though he's had a lot of success against them. I'm sure he's going to have some fun tonight because it's just a different group. Broke the chain, it looks like. This happened the other day. Rob Nodine yeah. gets a get his uh, after tick punch. 
gets it on camera as Felix's necklace. Let me figure the over under on that one is. Ooh, I hate to even guess. I remember what Brendan Ryan told me about when Albert Pujols gave him a necklace that he, I believe he's wearing. He has the little brother version of what Albert wears. And Albert's got something like 20, 30 large on his neck. And when Ryan was a rookie and a couple of guys were riding him hard, and, hey, rookie, here, take this. And he gave him one of the necklaces, was like seven to 10 large. But that. 2 2. Bouncing ball smoke back in the lineup as it. An easy go and a good inning for Felix Hernandez as he starts the night going really well against Cleveland. How about the power of packing leadoff man for the Mariners, Sean Figgins? He went deep last night leading off the ball game, and he's about to lead things off here tonight. In the first two games of the series, the Mariners with a lot of success early in the game. Ackley will follow Figgins, and then it's Ichiro home run in the first inning. Also, smoke back in the lineup, inning cleanup. Seager, Saunders, Olivo, John Jaso, third start. The other two previous starts, he's played well. You can see by his average at 375, and then Brendan Ryan will hit ninth. Look the numbers for Tomlin. They mentioned one start for him. The other one he had to come out of relief. ERA is high. He's given up a lot of hits. 13 hits over the eight two thirds for Tomlin. He's not overpowering. He has to hit his spots. Will change speeds. Mariners will have to show some patience with him. One out to Figgins. He's showing some serious pop last night. Eighth career leadoff homer. Eighth pitch that he saw, he drove it to deep right center field. I think that is something that he's really done a good job with. His first at bat leading off, taking pitches. You mentioned it was the eighth pitch of his first at bat last night that he hit the home run. He's been consistent with that. Here he is in the 3 0 count. Got it off of Derek Lowe. Lowe did not have it last night. Four and a third of eight hit, four run ball, six walks. We're in one to figures. Walking over to the cage, I had to give him some great. Hey, stud, you going deep again? Then he claimed he didn't think he hit it hard, hard enough to leave. He was thinking triple all the way. He hit it out to that corner where the 385 mark is. As cool as it, man, that's, that's a pretty good ride. It's not a good off the bat, too. Yeah. He had hit one right handed. It's the A's early. He died in left center field. Payoff pitch. Swing and a miss. He's gone. One out. Take a look at the defense playing behind Tomlin in this evening's game. In the outfield, you have Shelly Duncan in left, Brantley in center, Chu out in right field. On the infield, Hanahan back in the lineup at third. Donald and Kipnis up the middle. Casey Kochman, your first baseman, and Carlos Santana will do the catching. 
Josh Tomlin, 27 year old Texan pitching to Dustin Ackley. Tomlin out of Bullard, Texas. Just Ackley about Tomlin. He said, uh, he's a comfortable at bat. He's like Colby Lewis. Not going to blow you away with the fastball. Nibbles at the corners all the time. He stays for the most part down in the zone. Tomlin 12 and 7 last year, 4 2 5. ERA and 26 starts. And we have a ball on the field. There we go. Well, the Mariners off of Masterson and Derek Lowe, first two right handers to start in this series. Sinker ballers. Mariners made a conscious effort to try to take the pitches the other way. That is the left handed hitters, and they had a lot of success doing that. I think you could take the same approach with Tomlin, even though he doesn't sink it like Lowe or Masterson. He's not overpowering. He's going to try to get you out with off speed pitches. Did not go. Check down Angel Campos. And I assign it. Home plate umpire. Dale Scott at first. Bill Miller at second. And Angel Campos at third. Actually coming off a two for four night last evening. Get a two two count. Like a statue out there. Now he's ready to go. Down low. We had the miss action after August 24th last year. Elbow inflammation. Went on the DL. Was pretty good shape. Tied for ninth in wins in the American League with 12. See a few of those pitches down out of the strike zone. That's where he wants to pitch that last pitch to Ackley. Good pitch for him to hit. Fouled it off. That's a good fastball for Tomlin at 90 miles an hour. He'll typically be in the upper 80s. 3 2. Look out. Foul ball. Nice play. This night's made. Good night, everybody. Check, please. Got a ball. See you later. Down. How about the other power packing outfielder for the Mariners last night? We talked, sure yeah, you talked about Biggins. Wasn't sure if he got it. That one was a no doubter. Well up into the seat. Ichiro's first home run of the year. And ever the needle or mine went farther than yours. <laughs> See him unload. Same general direction. This one's going to stay in the yard, though. Brantley's under. Three or three down for the Mariners in the first. We are underway. The rubber match between the Tribe and the Mariners.
been delivered. Check it out. That's a big one, too. <laughs> My goodness. Look at it right out of the oven. Still steaming and everything. Boy, wasting no, no time. Getting after it. <laughs> Pretty good crown he's wearing tonight. Kings Court started late last year. Been a big success here at Tifco Field. Carlos Santana to lead it off. The catcher switching. Carlos one for four last night. He had a single. He hit a huge three run homer in the fifth inning in game one. After the Mariners had gone up 8 1, that was part of a seven run fifth inning for Cleveland. A lot of times you see a team go up you know, that big and gradually the, the opponent will come back to possibly win, but a dramatic turnaround by Cleveland. Exactly throws out Santana for out number one. Planning to see the Mariners at Safe Gold Field all season long? Well, consider a Mariners 16 game plan and score big savings and benefits. Enjoy the same great seat for every game when you choose from nine pre-selected game plans at Mariners.com slash 16. Great shots from all around the building. Mike Jensen running that camera and as per usual, they got a great crowd in the pen. Here's Travis Hafner. Power against power here after five for 22 in the home run against Felix over school. To your point, David, I was talking to Eric Wedge and he was asking me the same thing. Have you ever seen a club score that many runs and turn around and give it right back? And I said, not in that same inning like that. I said, I've seen lots of times where they've come back over the course of three sure. or four innings, but to have it happen the way that it did, unusual. Last year against Toronto, down 7 nothing. Was it Luis Rodriguez in a home run to win it, I think, or a triple to win it? That was a sustained buildup and not an immediate. You know, gratification like these guys had. They went boom, 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 and seven spot on the board. Two and one here to half. After over three last night, first night, two for five. It's an RBI. Three and one. Movement on that pitch and it was outside. First walk issued by Phil Shimandez. One out base runner. Brings up Casey Katzman. This is a great double play opportunity. Two of the slower guys in the league. Seven for 18 with a home run against Brooks. Chicago White Sox come to town. Weekend series with them. Then the Mariners have a day off to travel on Monday. A long road trip. Detroit, Toronto, Tampa Bay. Again for Felix, it seems like first couple two innings, three innings maybe, tries to find his way through it. If he gets past that, in good shape. Typically, it's a long night for hitters, and right now, he's able to get the first strike over. His six batters that he's faced, five of them first pitch strikes. See by that. Pitch a Kochman away, similar to the way he pitched Hafner. I think his changeup will end up being a big pitch for him tonight. Yeah, 
Seven Indians hitting from the left side of the plate against Fields tonight. One, two, dribble foul again. Gotchman last night, first three times up, tap back to the pitcher, and then fly to center. Big one by Jason Vargas last evening. Seven innings. Said he did lose it in the sixth, so all of a sudden I couldn't throw a strike. And he got out of a bases loaded situation, picked up his second win of the season, first two at home. It was one two. Seemed like Jason broke a lot of bats in last night's game. I think the Indians' approach was to try to take his changeup away because he was sawing them off consistently in the game last night. A good cut fastball going to the right handers. Well, it two strikes the catchman. They're not a stolen base threat at first. The one two. Do it again. All the pitches away. He was asking for Olivo to come out to the mound, have a quick conversation with him. Number of off speed pitches to Kochman. Coming off a good year with Tampa Bay last season. So under shading him towards left center. One, two. Swing and a miss. He's gone. Strikeout number two for Felix. Two outs here in the second inning. Casey Kochman, the veteran, probably thinking Felix at some point was going to have to come inside with the fastball. He does, and it's another changeup. 89 miles an hour. You can see the great movement that Felix gets on that pitch. Circle change. Where do you rate that change? I mean, that's got to be I, a top three in the, in, in the American League, right? I, I, I think it is. I think it's the best changeup in the league, and that's unusual because if you watch his changeup, it's typically only four, maybe five miles an hour off of his fastball. Typically, guys that have the great changeup are somewhere around 10. But Felix gets such good movement as an easy ground ball to first to end the inning. He gets such good movement on his changeup. And I think it's one of the best in the business. Well, he showed it right there in that inning. To the home second we go with Smoke, Seeger, and Saunders coming up. Field with the roof extended, protecting us from some nasty weather outside. Here's smoke. 
to the hole, covered nicely there by Kipnis for the first out. Let's check in with Angie Minton. Thanks, Dave. The uh, Minnesota Twins visiting the New York Yankees, and Curtis Granderson uh, might be skinny, but he's got lots of might. He didn't go yard, not once, not twice, but three times. Bottom of the first, Twins up 4 nothing, and Granderson gets the Yankees on the board with this shot to center. Then he does it again in the bottom of the second, two-run blast, and then again in the fourth. Granderson, three home runs today. Yankees win 7-6. Dave? All right, Angie, thank you. Granderson, three home runs. Mike, you know what that means. Three choruses from John Sterling of the Grandy Man Can. <laughs> Grandy Man Can. My man, That's John. Nice. The pitch. <laughs> well hit. Fair ball down the line. Bouncing off the sideboard. Seeger play in front of him. A.L. He's in the second with a double. Kyle Seeger. Continues to swing a scorching bat his fifth double already. And Seager getting more and more aggressive. Gets a fastball middle in. Gets it past the first baseman Casey Kochman. It looked like Chu was in pretty good shape to try to cut that off but it hits a little piece of the wall and kicks it back out towards right. Right field so Seager ends up with a double. Seager now four for four against Tomlin. Michael Saunders. I think Tomlin, yeah, Tomlin was on the mound that last trip to Cleveland. Remember Seager went nuts to Cleveland? I think it was the earthquake trip. It seemed like he was hitting everything. I think he was. It was a ridiculous series for him. Went something like eight for 12 or something. I was like thinking that. nine, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and everything, boom. I mean, he was on it. I, I think the impressive thing for him early in the season as you look at all the hitters and everybody wanting to get off to a good start. The one thing about him is he's been consistent. Consistently every day he shows up. He, he looks like he's having the same at bats all the time. And that's why he's hitting 300 right now a couple of weeks into the season. Ball one to Saunders. Michael 0 for 2 last night. Couple of walks. Went 1 for 5 in Tuesday's game. That is a foul ball. Boy, he was bitten for extra bases. When he was out in front of a changeup. Pitch up in the zone off speed pitch. Only 82 miles an hour. It is a changeup. Hooks it foul. Veteran umpire Dale Scott right on top of it. One pitch. The right field. Chu has the plate on the hop. Seager's going to hold as Chu has a great throwing arm. Gets it back in. With one out, Mariners building something here in the second inning. Base hit by Saunders. And it's another off speed pitch. This time, Michael able to wait back on it. That's a good pitch, too. It's a change up on the outside corner. And with one out, Kyle Seeger wanting to make sure that the ball hits the outfield grass before he takes off. Thought you had a chance at it. Good setup here for Olivo. Looking to boost his average. He comes in tonight at 125. Got one for four last night. Pinch ran on Tuesday. Runners at the corners, one out. Last night's game, Eric Wedge trying to help him out, put a hit and run on. When the runner took off, the second baseman went to cover the bag, left the entire right side of the infield open, and Olivo was able to hit a ground ball to the right side. I think sometimes you get in those situations, the manager will put the play on just trying to get the infielders to move around and, and get their, their guy going, and Olivo certainly in that situation. 1-1. One, one. Anahan cuts it off. He goes for one. They go for two, and they got it. 
Heck of a jab by Saunders to try to blow up Kipnis. But Kipnis hangs in there and they turn it. 5 4 3 double play, and there goes the Mariner threat. Seattle Mariners Baseball on Route Sports is brought to you by Banner Bank. Better ideas, better banking. By CenturyLink. And by Jack in the Box. Right now at Jack in the Box, you can try the new Chipotle Chicken Club combo for just $4.99 plus tax. And by the Emerald Queen Casino presenting Air Supply one night only. Get locked in love with Air Supply May 11th. For tickets, go to emeraldqueen.com. Back upstairs, Dave and Mike. All right, Angie, thank you very much. Mariners had a nice-looking threat in the second inning. Double play. Ends the inning. Here's Jack Hanahan. He's got good numbers against Felix Hernandez. For the beat writers. Cleveland said, uh, was talking to Jack about it. He said, Do you know you're 7 for 15 with two long balls against Felix? He said, Get out of here. <laughs> Did not know. <laughs> really? Well, maybe that'll work in Felix's favor now. <laughs> He's ahead on two. You're talking about the opportunity for the Mariners. We saw the same thing a couple times last night, Dave. First and third, one out, and it looks like guys just a little anxious trying to make it happen. Sometimes you have to let the pitcher come to you, and he's trying to he's trying to pitch down in the zone so that you'll hit that ground ball. And the guy's just a little anxious. We saw it with Montero last night, and I think Kawasaki. Montero hit into a double play in the fourth. And there was another double play just what you talked about as Hanahan swings and misses. Tag applied by Olivo. Felix's third strikeout. One out here in the third. How about Michael Saunders? As John Wetland would say, good old fashioned country hardball. Watch this. Well, his job is to break up the double play. And he did everything that he could do. Thought he thought he had prevented yeah. the completion. Good yeah. work, though. Yep, when Eric Wedge sees that, he'll love it. Good work, Michael Saunders trying to break up too. Time I see that, I think a helmet great, Don Baylor, among others. Among others. Kirk Gibson for me. Kirk Gibson for you. You can hear him coming. <laughs> we will see Gibby down in Arizona. That's right. June 18, 19, and 20. Swing and a miss by Jason Donald. How about that staff he's got? Got Matty Williams, a third base coach. Got Don Baylor, the hitting coach. Just the name of few. Where's Trammell? Is Trammell with him? I think he is. I think he is. I think yeah. he's, yeah, I think he's, he's the, the bench, bench coach. coach. Yeah. One and one. It's overpowering down at one and two. <laughs> you get here, Kirk. That's, a, <laughs> that's so true. <laughs> Here's a heck of a football player at Michigan State. The receiver, right? Yep, good one. 
One, two. A bang and a miss. Didn't have a chance. Jason Donald, goodbye. Fourth strikeout, two in a row, three of the last four. Bottom of the order for the Indians in the past. David mentioned what Hannah handed him, but all the guys had success against Felix coming into the game, and he is taking care of business a couple of strikeouts here in the third inning. Top of the order, Brentley took a called third strike and a 3 2 pitch. Lead off the ball game. Tribes had one base runner, half their walk with one out in the second. I don't know if it's, it's sprinters that do it, but when Gibson would run the bases like that, you could hear him because of the way he would breathe. Yeah, exactly. Every stride he'd yeah. exhale. Yeah. But particularly in football, a lot of guys do that. I know when, when I'm doing games on radio and our mic sometimes you can hear guys, man, and it's get out of the way. Back with a strike two and one. Like Felix has found that rhythm. Two one. Cleveland leaves here, goes to Oakland for three, and then returns home to Kansas City and the Angels. 2-2. Two -two. Swing and a miss. He's gone. Struck out the side through three innings. Felix Hernandez on fire. He's got five Ks here at Safe Gold Field. John Jaso to lead it off. John three for eight. There's a chance to swing the bat tonight. The DH. Homered in his safe go field Mariner debut third inning on Tuesday. Two run home. Stick the Mariners to an early lead. Only eight at bats for Jaso, but he has four RBI. A couple of nights ago. I thought that ball jumped off his bat. He said, I hit it right at the end of the bat. Yeah. He says, I was sitting on it. I got the pitch I wanted. The guy just thrown six straight balls. I knew what I wanted to do, and I hit it off the end of the bat. I know there was some discussion about that. I, I went and talked to Robbie Thompson about it. In those situations, what do you do? And he, he was adamant about it. He said he wants their guys to be aggressive. If they get a pitch like he did, the one he wanted to hit in the middle of the plate, he wants them to swing it. And unfortunately, he, did. he just hit it off the end of the mm. bat. But I, I like it too. be aggressive. 
Make something happen. You have a chance to win the game. He just won the game in Arlington with a base hit as he hits his ground ball out to second. Kipnis will throw to Catchman one out, but yeah, it's and Jaso with the three for eight and the four ribbons. It's like uh, during the NFL season, he was the most popular guy in Seattle, like a like a backup quarterback. And everyone says, "Hey, I'm gonna spot him when I spot him." Okay. <laughs> well. You know, and, and, and for John, all he can do is when he gets his opportunities to go out there and make things happen, and he's done that so far and continue. And, and those appearances will start to be more and more frequent all the time as the season moves on and you get a feel for your ball club. If anybody wants to cue a foggy, what is it, foggy time in old London town? You could do it right now because the fog. <laughs> The marine layer, the fog, whatever you want to call it, is it developed this ballpark. Thank goodness for the roof. Ryan fouls another one off. Into the gloaming, indeed, as we look. Sean Figgins awaiting his next turn. 0 oh 2 to Ryan. 1 for 3 career against Tomlin. Ryan coming up a 1 for 3 after last night. Thirty four pitches for Tomlin. Tomlin originally drafted by the Padres 11th round 05 did not sign picked by the tribe in 06 in the 19th round. There's a call third strike Ryan's gone. Third strike out for Tomlin two outs here in the third. And you can you can add your own uh, subtitles to that book. Yeah. <laughs> well you can see on the tracer too it was just a perfect pitch. On the knees, splitting the outside corner. And that's something that Tomlin will have to do to, to be successful. He's not overpowering. Again, his fastball will be around 88 miles an hour. He can show his bunt takes a strike. Well, you got what, what Ackley said about comfortable at bat. I mean, he's not going to be knocking you down, he's not going to be overpowering you in terms of. Big time he like masters. There's a fly ball left field. Shelly Duncan quick inning for Tomlin. And the Mariners are gone. Felix though dominant. Five strikeouts through three innings in this scoreless ball game. Here's a pretty good indication of where Felix Hernandez is tonight through three innings. This is for his fifth strikeout. It ended the third inning, striking out Michael Brantley. It's a lot, just one base run. One of the few four seam fastballs we've seen from him elevating after he was able to get the two strikes on Brantley with the good two seamer away. That was a four seam fastball up in the zone, able to throw by Brantley. Looks comfortable and looks like he has everything going. Again, I think he's just excited to see a different club. Aren't we all? Yes. <laughs> Good point. 
It'll be Kipnis, Chu, and Santana. Two, three, and four here in the fourth inning. Kipnis fly to Figgins. First time up. How about the A's? They're giving the Angels everything Haven't they can they? handle. Yeah, they got them last night. And lead right now. One nothing in the home third in Anaheim. Texas continues the rampage. They win at Detroit 10 3. And I believe that was Mr. Darvish's game. 50 pitches for Felix. Two one count. Bender. Vicious, huh? Two and two. Two two. Half a dozen strikeouts, and we're only in the fourth. And that is four in a row rung up by Felix Hernandez as we take a look at our AT&T trivia question. When was the last time a pitcher tossed more than 10 innings in a game? This on the heels of Mr. Cliff Lee last night going 10 innings scoreless. But the Giants overcome that and win 1-0. 95, 90, 1980, and 1975. Shin Su Chu. Um, I'll go 1995. That was the first answer. I threw a dart and I hit the first one. <laughs> <laughs> There's your strike one and one. Chew grounded out to smoke. First time. Two and one. He's uh, Mr. Flowers is looking for an answer here. And we're at the same stage, have, coach, I, I or have, what? I, I, no, I think I'm going to go with uh, the one that I remember. I think 1990. I believe Dave Stewart. There was a pitcher there. I'm not sure if he was the last one, but I think he did it in 1990. Yeah. Two one. How'd you do against Stu over the during your time? That's a great question. I did okay. Fastball running in on your hands, right? Consistently. Move you around. Hard breaking ball. He always give you a fastball to hit, though. Just shy of the King's Court out there. Two and two. And the results. We're agreeing with you, Dave. Was it Peter Sellers movie shot in the dark? That's what it was. 2-2. Two, two. Smoke will get another opportunity. Second time he's retired Chu. Two. two outs here in the fourth. Condolences go out to music lovers everywhere on the passing of Levon Helm, drummer for the band, Rock and Roll Hall of Famers, lead singer on many of their great classics. He passed away yesterday. And I am told you had a 316 batting average off of uh, Dave Stewart. That's impressive. And a couple of long balls, too. Very nice. I will take it. <laughs> <laughs> take your kids, everybody. Tell Grandma. I knew Curtis was looking it up. I was a little concerned about the answer for that one, but yay. He, he thought it was taking a little bit too much time there to get you an answer. I know how that goes. That'll work. 316 against Dave Stewart. Boy, that's, that's good. Big swing missed by Santana. One and one. Felix is dealing. We're in the fourth. And again, he has it all working. Looks like he can throw his breaking ball for a strike when he wants to. He's had a great changeup. He, that pitch is usually with him, though. It's rare for him to go out there and not have to get changeup. Tanner grounded the second, his first time up. Outside. Oh, 
Rangers hitter Santana switch at 27 home runs last season. Good start, three homers and nine runs batted in with two one. First hit of the ball game, it's going to be extra bases. Santana drives one all the way to the fence. And Cruz in the second with a double. Just the second base runner tonight for Cleveland. First hit. Looks like he gets another fastball. It is two seam fastball running away from him. He can swing it. 27 home runs last year for Santana, the switch hitter for the Indians. Well, they lost, they traded Victor Martinez. Remember, they traded him to Boston, and then he's now with Detroit. I thought they were going to be lacking a catch. Boy, they bring this kid. Two outs, here's Travis Hafter. Walked his first time. All one. Just joining us, Mariners threatened in the second. They had runners at first and third. Lebo hit into an inning ending double play. This is the first threat by Cleveland, runner at second. Throw down to second. Have the play on. So kind of back. Couple things with that one. You can see the strong arm from Olivo to Brendan Ryan coming in front of the bag when he realized they weren't going to get Santana. He came in front of the bag to receive the throw so the runner doesn't get in the way. And then the third thing is, is by making that play, Santana's not going to be in such a hurry to get a big secondary lead to try to score on a base hit. But even though you weren't able to throw him out, I think some things were accomplished there. We see it and don't even think about it. I think for Felix and Hafner has been swinging the bat well for the Indians. 281 with a couple of home runs coming into the game. You have another left hander in Casey Kochman on deck, but Kochman has been struggling hitting 195. I don't think I would give him anything in the middle of the plate on a 3 0 count if I walk him on walk. Nice bouncing ball. Smoke takes care of it on a 3 0. Breathe easier now. That was a good pitch by Felix Hernandez. We still have a scoreless ball game. Still scoreless. Hi, friends. Angie Mentink here at the Ford Sports Desk. We continue our trip through the AL Central tomorrow. It'll be Hector Noesi who tries to remain perfect here at Safeco Field. He won his last start against the A's. He starts the first of three against the White Sox. Chris Sale, who was drafted 13th overall just two years ago, will start for Chicago. Blake Bevin is up against Phil Humber. And then in the finale, Kevin Millwood against the lefty John Danks. Dave. All right, Angie, thank you very much. Here's. Justin Ackley to lead it off. Ackley, each row and smoke home fourth. 
against Josh Tomlin. 2 0 is the count. Far. Three strikeouts, no walks, giving up two hits. And two. Head off right here. There's a base hit. That can end on the box hard. He's got the green arm. He's going to challenge him. He's in there with a hustle double. Dustin Ackley, good leadoff in the fourth inning here for the Mariners. This is a really good at bat by Ackley. Tomlin has been living at the bottom of the strike zone, and Ackley showing some patience and waiting for a pitch to hit. He gets one belt high on a 3 2 count. Chu with one of the better throwing arms as far as outfielders go, but Ackley again, great speed, running hard all the way out of the box. Dares him to throw him out. The high throw, he's able to slide under the tag. Get himself in the scoring position. Now see if Ichiro can move him up. See Ichiro trying to pull there. Swing and a miss. Good athleticism by Donald. Spike Ackley, although a pretty good blow, but it could have been a lot worse. You can see Ackley turn his head away from it. Not sure if he was going to get spiked or not to protect himself. Intro pulls it but foul. Jeff Tanner having the conversation, knowing that Intro trying to pull it. I would think now you get two strikes most of the time. The manager appreciates the fact that you tried to move him over. He made some good pitches on you. Just go to hitting now. Try to get a base hit. Ichiro one for three is a big first inning home run on a 1-0 pitch last night against Derek Lowe. Oh, oh, two from Tomlin. That is an emergency hat. 74 mile an hour breaking ball. It looked like it was going to be up. Ichiro at the last second, not sure, and just did whatever he could to get it out of there. Look at him just give up on that pitch and then try to spoil it at the end. I think he thought it was going to be high. 0 2. Oh, fly swap. He might, he, he might be the best I've ever seen at that. Um, Wade Box was pretty good. I think we go with your first day. I think he might be the best that I've seen at that. I can get an argument from him about it. Pulled on that one, Ackley head up, going to third. Throw down to first to retire each row. So one out, Ackley moves up. 18th trivia question. Last time a pitcher tossed more than 10 innings in a game, I guess 95. Mike guessed 90. Fans went with me at 95. Survey says, uh, wow, Andy Hawkins, you might have been on that club, huh? I was on that club. 11 and two thirds to the Twins. Dave Stewart in 90 against the Mariners. I'm talking about you were with Andy Hawkins in 90, right? I believe I was there, yeah. yeah. I was riding the shuttle, though, at that point. I could have been down in Columbus again. <laughs> oh, what a bullet! Snagged by Kotchman. Smoke with a long, hard glare at Kotchman. That is a shame. Smoke has been swinging the bat well. Homered on Sunday. Four hits on Tuesday. As you take a look at this swing, barrels this one up right at Casey Kochman. Defends himself nicely. Have to hit it harder than that. Wow. So Seeger going to try to score Ackley now with two outs. He's hit a few balls hard lately. That's with that question, the hardest ball he's hit in a while. Smoke? Yeah. I would agree. 
He just can't hit. There wasn't anything cheap about the home run he hit on Sunday, though. I can tell you. Agreed. That. Yeah, low liner gets into the stands. 0 1 pitch. Cashman has to be in the right place. 1 1. Inning started with a hustle double by Ackley, Ichiro. He struck out. And on the wild pitch that he swung at, Ackley takes third hard liner by Smoke, and now Seeger one and two. Felix Hernandez. Get a lot of run support last time out. Love this run. Is there any more that he can get here? The one, two. Back up the middle. Donald turns, throws, pulls Kotsman. Oh, oh my goodness! They call him out. Here comes Eric Wedge. Dale Scott at first base with the call. Donald stayed with it. Kotsman. On the bag, on the bag, and he got him. Good call. That's a good call, and we talk about it so many times. These guys are good, man. They get these plays right at first base, the bang bangers. Nice job down there by Dale Scott. You see Katzman leads it off here for Cleveland. Did a good job holding the bag there and a bang bang play to end the bottom of the fourth. Well, we've known he's a tremendous defensive first baseman. He had the highest fielding percentage again amongst first basemen last year. They're just going to do that. Keith Hernandez get off the bag early, sell it, and go back to the dugout. Uh, uh, Ron, well, Fairley. Ron Fairley Ron told him Fairley. that. That was a great story. Remember that last year? Yeah. Max talking about, hey, where'd you learn that quick footwork? Hey, Ron Fairley. <laughs> Red was a good player. Yes, he was. Good player. Retired as Katzman by Ackley. Let's go to Angie Menting. Guys, the Chicago White Sox and the Baltimore Orioles wrapped up their four-game series today. The White Sox now headed to Seattle. The main reason why they're coming on a losing note, that would be because of Adam Jones. Top of the fifth, O's on top, 3-2. Jones hits a two-run blast to left field. It's his fifth of the season. Jones finished the day two for four, three RBI. The O's win at 5-3. It's our Sterling Bank score, Dave. All right, Angie, thank you. One out in the fifth. Ball one to Shelly Duncan. Duncan first time up, grounded out the smoke. 
Hawks had three tappers come his way tonight. One on one. Unfortunately for the Mariners, they've had two opportunities in the second and the fourth inning. Runner at third with just one out, Dave, and weren't able to get the job mm. done. Those are opportunities you don't want to pass when you have Felix on the mound with the way he's pitching. Two balls, one strike. Shelly Duncan, the left fielder, hitting 290 coming in. He went 2 and 2. Kings Court making themselves heard here tonight. 2 2 pitch. Swing and a miss. He's gone. Strike out number seven. Two outs here in the fifth. They were talking about most innings pitched in a game throwing shutout baseball. It, it totals about Cliff Lee. Ten innings. Boy, Halliday, Harang, and Mulder. Going back to Andy Hawkins when you played in 1990. Remember when Billy had the four great starters and just wore them out in 1980s? They did the back 14 innings. Clay Kirby. Gaylord Perry, that's a great, um, great tournament. Tom Cheney had 21 strikeouts in his game. And Marischal, that was the game he won 1 nothing over Spawn on the Willie Mays home run in the 16th. As Hanahan quietly ends the fifth inning to the delight of Kings Court. Got to get the Kings some runs. No score, six, seven, and eight. Mariner order coming up here in the home fifth. Saunders, Olivo, and Jason. Strike one to Michael Saunders. Face hit to right, his first time up. Josh Tomlin struck out four, hasn't walked anybody. He's given up three hits. Pretty well struck to the gap. Brantley is not going to get it off the fence. Saunders in high gear. He'll shut it down right there. Lead off double for Michael Saunders, who's enjoying a two for two night. And for Saunders, his fourth double of the season. And Michael has been swinging the bat better lately. Gets a pitch up and out over the plate. For a big man, he can really run. I thought when it hit the padding out there and it dropped straight down, he was going to get a chance for a triple. That's lead off double for Michael. Up the corners against Olivo. Should have bunt, bunts it foul. Eric Wedge putting the signs on. A lot of times with a veteran player, the manager will just tell you to get him over any way that you can. And Olivo struggling here early in the season. 
Probably bunting on his own right there here in the fifth inning. So they'll try it again, trying to move the runner up. And a hand in on the grass, so it's catch. It's the bunt down, it's a beauty. Santana throws him out. Great job by Miguel Olivo with the sacrifice. That's his first of the season. I think it's a really good play typically in the American League early in the game. You won't see the guy sacrificing like this, but with Felix on the mound, he looks like he's in command of this game. Move the runner over. Saunders speed. All you have to do is get it in play. It doesn't have to be a perfect bump, but that's a pretty good one by Olivo. Now the Mariners third inning where they've had a runner at third with just one out. Haven't been able to cash them in yet. The Indians will bring their infield up. Jaso the hitter. It's a strike. So grounded out second base. Mariners right now one for five runners in scoring position. One two. Drawn in infield. One out runner at third. 0-2 to Jaso. Puts it in play. Backhanders a throw home. Not in time. Wild throw. Jaso put it in play. He'll get the second. one nothing Mariners. But John Jaso gets the job done. We've seen, this yeah. the lead. We've seen this from Eric Wedge a couple of times here early. It filled in going with the contact play. Saunders really good speed. Above average speed at third base. Jaso with two strikes. Puts it in play. He's not happy with his at bat. But he'll get the job done because of Eric Wedge putting the contact play on, taking off right away. Throw is rushed to home plate, so Jason, Jason will move down. You can see no hesitation. Come in, put the pressure on the defense. Good slide by Saunders. And I like it. Make yep. something happen. Fielder's choice E4. No RBI. Really? One nothing Mariners. Yeah. Asanga takes the bat, gets it out of the way. I think if you go back and you take a look at him taking off on contact, that's not an easy play. I think Jason should get an RBI on that. Ryan can pick up another run. Nice hop for the shortstop Donald. Throws out Ryan. Well, with two outs, Jaso's at third. Hey, it's a Mariners giveaway. You won't want to shake your head at, but it's bound to shake its head back. It's you tomorrow, 7:10. Each row bobblehead night, free to the first 20,000 fans. Thanks to Root Sports and check out this year's collectible each row bobblehead. Go to Mariners.com/promotions. Fielder's choice E4, no RBI, top of the order. Biggins looks at a strike. Biggins two for three in last night's game. Showing you the home run, but he also had a base hit in the fourth. Get a two out here. Hit here. Good breaking ball from Tomlin. Have to get it done with two strikes. Trying to pick up another run. Oh, two strikes. One and two to figures. Back up the middle. Kipnis. Steadies throws and gets the Mariners do get a run. They leave a runner. They have a one nothing lead for Felix Hernandez. John Jaso put it in play and made it happen.
Seattle Mariners baseball on Brew Sports is brought to you by Pizza Hut. Get any pizza, any size, any toppings for only $10 when you carry out from Pizza Hut. Buy a Northern Quest Casino, Spokane's newest destination resort. And by Verizon. Verizon 4G LTE, America's fastest, most reliable 4G network. Coming up next, it's going to be the Chicago White Sox after the finale tonight. We'll get you ready with a preview in tonight's postgame show. Dave, back upstairs to you. All right, Angie, thank you. One run. Hey, Mike, it's a start. I like it. Eric Wedge being aggressive. Olivo Bunning just trying to get that one run for Felix, who's been pitching well. One on the contact play. He had the right guy at third, and Saunders runs well. Did you go over and give Rick Riz the business? You the know guy? I did. <laughs> <laughs> two for two this year. Two for two. <laughs> That's exactly right. I, I was right on it. As soon as I saw you leave the booth, I said, he's going over to torture Rick Riz. Riz hates that play a lot more than I do. You like it a lot, and you're on a good roll here, too. And Wedge has been, two, like you said, two for two. I think if you have a club that you don't have a bunch of guys hitting 25, 30 home runs for you, why not? Swing and a miss. Good off speed pitch to which uh, Mr. Riz retorted. He's starting to buy into it a little bit. He said, well, they had the right guy in Saunders at third. He can run. Okay, I agree. I agree. Good play. <laughs> Folks, that's a running battle between Mike Flowers and Rick Riz, the contact play. Swing and a miss. And Felix, wow. That's strikeout number eight. We're in the sixth. Boy, heard you guys on a plane on the bus. What do oh, you mean? No. Come on. Been arguing about it for seven years now. <laughs> Take a look at this last pitch. Bottom just falls out of it. Olivo doing a nice job of keeping it in front of him. to the top of the order Michael Brantley he struck out twice looking and swinging his bunt ball one it's the fourth start of the season for Felix and I think this is the best we've seen him the constant I think you might have touched on it the change up They're just tremendous control of everything else oh no. line drive right to Ryan two outs See what else is brewing. Let's check in with Andrew Menton. Hey guys, a Texas Rangers is set on top of the AL West right now. Today they started a four game series with the Detroit Tigers. Why the Mariners wrap up their series with the Cleveland Indians. Top of the second, Rangers first baseman Nike Napoli gets his fifth home run of the season. That gives the Rangers a 2 0 lead. Napoli has a hit all five of his home runs in the last four games. He's been on fire. And uh, the Rangers winning streak now at seven, guys. All right, Angie, thank you. They scored 10 runs on 19 hits, hit one home run. Texas Rangers. And not surprised, it's changed the fielder's choice E4 to and added an RBI to John Jason. Yeah, they have to give him an RBI in that situation. Two to the count to Jason Kipnis, the second baseman, fly to left and to strike out. Biggins will back up. And the track on the track makes the catch in a one, two, three inning. So Felix, seven in a row retired, picks up his eighth strikeout. He is rolling through six. They need to get him some more runs.
So strike one. Ackley let off the fourth. The hustle double got the third on a wild pitch. And that's as far as he got. The Ackley each row in smoke here in the sixth. Chapel foul. You mentioned the hustle double from Ackley. I was really impressed with his at bat. His first time up, he strikes out looking. And still had to show some patience to get to a 3 2 count on some, some pretty good pitches, fastballs that were down the zone. He laid off of them, finally got a pitch that was up and was able to hit it hard in the right center field. Tomlin trying to keep you on the ground. He's going to try to pitch at the bottom of the strike zone. 3 1 pitch. 3 2 pitch, and he's gone. Nickley takes. Called third strike, second time tonight. And a strikeout number five for Tomlin. High speed pitch brought to you by Century Hunt, Century Link. Yeah, I'm told that you played in both of the historic Andy Hawkins losses. <laughs> The no hitter. Somebody retro sheeted uh, sent it to me via Twitter here. You went over three and eight. And the no hitter. Uh, this that was an eight inning. He goes no hit no hit ball for eight innings. And you guys lose uh, four nothing at Old Comiskey. And there's one guy in this ball game that was in that ball game with him. Dale Scott, the umpire. This one popped up. Third baseman Hanahan stays with it. Two outs. Two outs here in the Mariners six the one nothing lead plan a group outing safe goal field right now to catch each row Felix and the Mariners getting together with 40 friends has never been so easy fun and affordable so round up that little league team your co-workers and more and make plans for summer outing at safe goal field to reserve your group date go to Mariners.com slash groups. The no hitter you lost four nothing. I definitely remember that game the other one I don't remember. We'll get that one up for you. Smoke looks at. And a strike here. He had Hibbert Jones or Radinsky. And Scott Radinsky, he's. Yeah, he's here. Pitching, pitching coach. coach with the Indians. Right. Dale Scott, he umpired in that game. He was he had on plate. Well, Justin Smoke, his last time up, tried to take the hat off of Casey Kochman, the first baseman. He had a line drive about as hard as you could hit it. Unfortunately, it was right at Casey. See if he can elevate something this hit back. Oh, that pitch was like might have been down a little bit. Ah, pretty good pitch, just off the plate. Justin didn't like sure it. Sure did. Yeah, One and I can't two. Can't blame him on that. And smoke is gone. Tomlin, he's got half a dozen strikeouts through six. A one nothing lead and Felix has got to just keep on keeping on.
copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Seattle Mariners. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Seattle Mariners. Dave Sims, Mike Flowers, Root Sports Crew, as we watch Felix. Happy Felix night, everybody. A 1 0 lead for the Mariners, an RBI by John Jaso in the fifth. The only score thus far. And Felix is filthy tonight. He's given up just a one base hit to Santana. High ball left field. Biggins going to take care of it. One out. Big out getting Shin Su Chu. Chu to be followed by Santana and Hafner. A 3 4 5 inning for Cleveland. 85 pitches for Felix, 50 of them for strikes. I think out of his four starts, this is his best one, but I think it's the best as far as having all of his pitches working for him. He looks like he can throw whatever he wants whenever he wants for strikes. Dangerous hitter here in Carlos Santana. Double to right center his last time. He's one for two. Felix with eight strikeouts, one walk. Tomlin's not shabby at all. He's got six strikeouts, hasn't walked anybody, and given up four hits. He was trying to backdoor his breaking ball. Pitch was down just a little bit. One one. Swift the breaking ball. Two one to Santana. Three and one. Only walk tonight by Felix. One out base runner in the second. He walked Travis Hafner. After a race. Felix will take care of this one. Two outs. Check out the Mariners calendar. It's being brought to you by Sleep Country USA. Finish up with the Tribe tonight. And Cleveland will be back August 20 through the 22nd. Then the Mariners host the Chicago White Sox before departing on a long road trip. That will take them to Detroit, Toronto, and Tampa Bay. And we'll have it all on Root Sports. After a walk and a ground out to smoke at first. Call in the Kings court. Now nah, I don't think Felix liked it either. Tracer, it looks like it was off the plate away. This is the first time we've seen Felix pace around the back of the mound. A dangerous hitter up there. I don't think he wanted to go to the 2 0 count. He wanted to get that pitch. 34 year old Travis Hafner out of Jamestown, North Dakota. 3 0. Casey Koshman waiting on deck. Good strike. After swung three and zero last time, and he grounded out first to end the fourth. Uh, grounded out first to end the fourth inning. Three and one here with two outs, nobody on. Slicing drive to the gap. Think he can't cut it off. Hafner will rumble into second base with a double. Yeah, Felix stayed away from him the entire at bat. A good idea late in the game, trying to protect one run lead. 
after going with the pitch hit it hard into the gap out in left center field but Felix wasn't going to give him anything to hit to right. Second double of the season for half. We'll have to make some good pitches on Casey Kochman now. Casey 0 for 2. Was able to strike him out swinging his first time up and grounded out to second back in the fifth inning. One for 11 in the series. That's the second Cleveland hit tonight. Antenna had a double in the fourth. That two came with two outs. Fifth inning RBI by John Jaso. The difference right now. On four hits for the Mariners, no errors, no runs, two hits, and an error for Cleveland. Four one. Good career numbers for Felix: five and three against Cleveland, 2.80 ERA. Two one. In his first start, that was in Japan. He went eight innings, six and a third at Oakland, and seven against Oakland here in his last start six days ago. Two one. He went. That's a heck of a pitch. Two and two. See how far that pitch is off the plate away. So much movement on his changeup and his fastball. A lot of times, as a hitter, the pitch will come out of his hand, and it looks like it's out of third. And by the time you try to attack it, it's good six, seven inches off the plate away. Felix sitting on eight strikeouts. Kings Court looking for number nine, the two-two, the catchman. Mm. Bring it up, number nine. A big win for Felix Hernandez. The drive strands Hafner at second base, and the Kings Court loves it. The Mariners with a one nothing lead here at Safeco Field. Thinning Stretch is brought to you by Washington's Lottery and the Department of Imagination, encouraging you to imagine bigger when you play the lottery. Visit us on Facebook or tweet what you do to Twitter hashtag if I want. Who knows? You might even see your tweet appear on TV during an upcoming game. How about this gem being worked by Felix Hernandez? High fly ball, deep right field. 
off the bat of Seager. Chews back there and he makes the catch. Pretty good ride. One out. Not too much air under it. Skied it out to that corner in right center field in front of the 385 mark. I like the swing though. He had a fastball in the middle of the plate. Belt high. Seager now one for three in the night. That'll bring up Michael Saunders. He's had a really good night. Two for two. He scored the only run. Katzman digs it out. Out number two. Two outs. Time for a better bank building to the future. Chi Shin Chang, the coma outfielder. Remember, he was picked up in the trade for Bedard. Off a good start. 42 average, 754 OPS. And last night he goes three for four with the run scored. I'd really like to see Olivo take a few pitches here if he can. Felix, a little bit of stress in that last inning. Last pitch, 93 miles an hour on the corner. And that's a veteran for you right there because. And this inning, Seager hit the first pitch, and then Saunders. He hasn't been in the dugout for very long. I think his pitch counts right at 100. Going two. Tony Sip. Haven't seen him yet in this series. Good little left hand. Go two. Mariners run coming in the fifth inning. Saunders was on third. He had doubled, sacrificed over, and on a contact play, high throw from the second baseman, and he was able to score. That's the only run in the ball game is Olivo. Stays alive, one and two. Deep for Oliva. One to the count. Pitch from Tomlin. That's a base hit. To the gap for Oliva. Cut off by Brantley. He's going for two. The throw to second. Not in time. A two out double by Miguel Olivo. Olivo with his second double of the season. Good for him. Hitting the road outside the Northwest. Do yourself a favor. Take the Mariners with you. Subscribe to MLB.tv to see the Mariners live on your favorite devices in HD quality. Visit Mariners.com to order and get more details. MLB.tv. Baseball everywhere. Here's John Jaso. See if he can pick up another RBI. Bouncing ball this time to second baseman. Bobbled by Kipnis, but he throws out Jaso. And that'll do it for the Mariners. To the eighth we go. Felix with nine strikeouts and a two-hit shutout.
a 1-0 lead as we head into the top of the eighth. He's been so good. He hasn't needed more than that. Hi, everybody. Angie Mentink here at the Ford Sports Desk. Mariners trying to keep pace with the Texas Rangers. Meantime, Oakland and Anaheim battling in the City of Angels. Top of the second A's catcher, Kurt Suzuki, hits a double to left field. That drove in Seth Smith for early 1-0 lead. And right now, scoring Anaheim 4-2. A's on top. Dave? All right, Angie, thank you very much. A 1-0 Felix lead. And a good start against Shelly Duncan. Strike one. Duncan over two. There you go. Seven innings pitch, just the two hits. Nine strikeouts with one walk for Felix. 101 pitches for Hernandez. 58 of them for strikes. Lucas Litke warming up. Bender outside. Oh, that's a good breaking ball. He's had a great slider tonight. Take a look at it. He was right on the outside corner, didn't get the call. Couple of doubles he's given up, Felix Hernandez. Same 10 in the fourth, half in the seventh. That's it. Nine strikeouts, one walk. Two and one. Two one. Right two. Again, just a check swing, a fastball on the outside corner, unable to hold up. Two, two to Duncan. That's run full. Bottom third of the order. Duncan, Hanahan, and Donald. They're in the eighth. Felix 105 pitches. His previous high, 107. Three and two to Duncan. Laid off man here in the eighth. Foul off. Seeing Litke up and throwing. I have to believe Tom Wilhelmson probably shut down for tonight. Tom has pitched in eight out of the 13 games so far, and I think he's been up a couple of times when he didn't pitch. Well really deserved. good, too. Yeah. I think Derek Wedge would love to see Felix get through this inning anyways. Brandon Lee left to try to save him. 3-2 pitch. Good pitch. Still throwing hard, 93 miles an hour. Those pitches on the outside corner. Venezuela to 3 2. No. Found it off again. Shelly Duncan putting up a fight. This will be the ninth pitch in this at bat. And two. Have a seat. Strikeout number 10 for Felix Hernandez. One out here in the eighth. Seattle Mariners baseball on Root Sports being brought to you by Sonic. It's snack size jumbo popcorn chicken time. Just a dollar ninety-nine after 8 p.m. by BECU. We are BECU. Join us by Ford. We are a local and by the Puyallup Fair. It's Spring Fair in Puyallup, April 19th through the 22nd. Come celebrate spring. Jack Hanahan, 0 for 2 tonight. One line drive base hit third of the night for the tribe their first single after a couple of doubles 
Tired of paying high gas prices at the pump? Ride Sound Transit and save big. Visit soundtransit.org for details. Jason Donald, the header, twice struck out on one, two pitches. Young man, a couple of nights ago, took that bad hop base hit to his face, stayed in the game. Oh, Off no. of Felix, charging Seeger, he's got no play, throw down the second. And holding there is Hanahan, a base hit. Looked like Felix had an opportunity to make the play. I think it went off of his glove. Eric Wedge coming out of the dugout. If he's able to field it, it's an easy double play. Hit sh sharply, and it didn't went right off to look like the side of his glove. Love the fact that Eric Wedge is leaving the ace in there. A little jam work in here by Cleveland. One out, two on. Lucas Lickey getting ready. Top of the order for Cleveland. Michael Brentley is 0 for 3. Strikeout looking, swinging, and a line out to Ryan at short. That was a quick trip from Eric Wedge. I think he just wanted to make sure that Felix was okay. I don't think there's any way Felix was going to give him the ball right now. This is his game. <laughs> That's all gone. <laughs> What's yeah. going to happen? Well, on five hits for the Mariners. No runs, four hits, and an error for Cleveland. First pitch. Ball one to Brantley. Signs again, the runner at second stack hand and Jason Donald at first. One oh. That push running outside, two and up. Lead off hitter Brantley runs well. Ackley. Has shortened up a little bit trying to get the double play. Apparently, I think we'll have to hit it right at one of the infielders if they have to move left or right. It's going to be difficult to double them up. Two and one. Foul ball. Steps of his dad, Mickey Brantley. Pretty good player. Played here in Seattle for a time. Two and one the count to Michael Brantley. Two on pitch. Up high. Three and one. Jason Kipnis is on deck. 0 for three night for him. Big pitch, three and one. In there for a strike. Brantley was thinking about tossing his bat. They thought it was up. It looks like it's right at the top of the strike zone. A borderline pitch, but I think Felix has earned it. 117 pitches now for Felix. Runners at first and second, one out. Court on a King Felix night. Payoff to Brantley. Round ball. Ackley slows it up. That'll keep the run from scoring. Bases are loaded. Well, Felix trying to get the ground ball or the strikeout. It is a ground ball. A great play by Ackley. Again, he shortened up the distance because of Brantley's speed of trying to get the double play. Ball hit in the hole. 
It looked like it was headed to right field, but actually just get right off the end of the glove, able to keep it on the infield. He's Hanahan from scoring and a diving effort from Ackley. Here's Kipnis. Here's Kipnis. Use a double play. Breaking ball. Strike one. And it started out well enough for Felix. He struck out Shelly Duncan after a long at bat. Ten pitches. Base hit the center by Hanahan. Base hit off of Felix by Donald. And now Brantley. Kept in the infield on the dive by Ackley has him, has him loaded up. Swing and a miss. 0 2. And it's sitting on 10 strikeouts right now. Gets one walk. Out of 12,942. Watching Felix get ready to throw pitch number 121. The 0 2 to Kipnis. No. Wow. That's a great pitch. He had him set up for it. Backdoor breaking ball. Looks like a changeup, and then he comes back in hard with a fastball. 92 miles an hour. Whew. Ball of two strikes. Bases loaded. Top eight, one nothing. Mariners. The pitch. Struck him out. Number 11. What a big one. For Felix Hernandez, two down. Woo! Look at this last pitch from Felix. Bottom falls out of it. Olivo keeps it in front of him. After the fastball inside that he didn't get the call on, Kipnis trying to hurry up, get a swing going a little bit early. And just a great pitch from Felix. Not over yet. Two outs, bases loaded. The always tough Shin Su Chu, who's 0 for 3. Couple of ground outs, a smoke, and a fly ball to left. High. All one. He got Hanahan at third, Donald at second, Brantley at first. Felix's career high in pitches in a game 128. Did it against the Yankees last year here at Safeco. Did it in San Diego. Fly ball left side. Figgins giving it a run and runs out of room. Brooks went beyond 120 pitches last year five times. Lipke, the only man up in the bullpen right now. All on Felix with the bases loaded, one and one. He's to count the two with two down. A one one. In there for strike two. Twelve thousand. 942 on a chilly night. Thank goodness for the roof raining outside. Felix, the one two delivery to Chew. The pitch. He struck him out. He got out of it. Felix Hernandez escapes a bases loaded situation in a one nothing game. Strikeout number 12. What a performance. Take a look at it. 93 mile an hour fastball, then he comes back with the off speed pitch. Back to back hitters. He tipped this and then chew the same two pitches to get the strikeout. Think it's pump? Wow. He gets hitters number two and number three in the order to stymie the Indians in the eighth.
for any more out of that man right there. Out of a bases loaded jam, he comes up with two huge strikeouts for outs number two and number three. Hey now, that was beautiful. <laughs> Big rip by Ryan. One and one to Brendan. And after I think it was 126, 127, his night is done, I think. Brandon Lee getting loose in the Mariners pen. Meanwhile, Tomlin's been pretty dug on good he too. Has. As we look at Brandon Lee, who's five for five and save opportunities. Tomlin struck out six, giving up a run on five hits. And he hasn't walked anybody. to Ryan might be playable catchman coming over and out let's take a look at our Coors Light freeze camp Like freeze camp, Sean Figgins looks at his strike. Biggie's fourth plate appearance is 0 for 3. And his only run coming in the fifth at John Jaso. Fielder's choice RBI. Here's a slicing drive to left. Duncan towards the line. Two outs. Done a good job tonight. Really shut down the Mariners. Mariners got the leadoff double by Saunders in the fifth, sacrificed him the third. He ran on a contact play ball, put in play by Jaso. Ground ball to Kipnis, the second baseman. Throw was high. Saunders scores. That's the only run. He's done what he's had to. He's pitched down in the zone, living on the edges of the plate, changing speeds. 74 mile an hour breaking ball right there to actually to get ahead of him. 0 2. Strikes him out. Josh Tomlin. Let's tip the cap to him. He's throwing a heck of a ball game. But right now, the Mariners looking at a Thursday night BLT. He's 5 for 5, 1 0 Mariners.
Family Casino, Seattle's premier entertainment, gaming, and dining destination. By AT&T, the nation's largest 4G network, AT&T Rethink Possible. And by Sterling Bank, life is about the good stuff. Your bank should be too. Visit our new website at bankwithsterling.com. Dave, Mike, I've chewed my nails down to nubs. <laughs> Manicure, pedicure. <laughs> Take care of that. You wouldn't have to worry about it. <laughs> One nothing Mariners. Brandon League time. Santana, Hafner, and Kotzman. Four, five, and six. Our Nissan chip to the bullpen. All star closer, Brandon League. You see his numbers. Five for five and save opportunities has not given up a run. Seven innings pitch, four strikeouts. Opponents average just 160. Last night, a five pitch save. Santana, one of the five hits tonight for the tribe. Two out, fourth inning double. 1 1. To the left handed hitters, Brandon Lee will stay with two pitches. It will be a fastball in the neighborhood of about 96 miles an hour and a hard split about 86. Manny Acton. And his bench coach, Sandy Alomar Jr., 2 1. The 3 1. Brilliance tonight by Felix Hernandez. Eight innings, five hits, no runs, one walk, a dozen strikeouts. And two of the bigger ones you'll ever see. Bases loaded. In the eighth inning to get out of the jam. 3 1 here. Oh. Did not go. Lead off walk to Santana. Check the third base umpire, Angel Kent Campos. 96 miles an hour. See if Santana's able to hold up. Yeah. Hard time arguing with that one. This is the second walk in a ball game. Felix walked Hafner in the second. Here's Travis now. Josh Tomlin threw a heck of a ball game, too. Eight innings, five hits, a run, no walks, and seven Ks. Hafner's last time up, Felix stayed away from him the entire at bat, and he ended up hitting a double out in the left center field. No. After two for three against Lee, and he had two of them that been home runs. One was a heartbreaker last year in Cleveland. Field set for two. Didn't hold up. All in two strikes. This is on a split. Typically, he'll try to keep it down in the zone, even bounce it. That one he leaves up. After not able to check his swing. Set the one two to Hafner. Ripped in the right field. Ichiro's got a plate on the bounce. Two on for Cleveland. Four and five hitters have done their jobs. 
Casey Katzman's the hitter. He's 0 for 3. Another split binger. Brandon leaves that one in the middle of the plate. Solid line drive by Hafner. One would think that Manny Acta would have Kochman Bunny in this situation. They have a right handed hitter and Shelly Duncan on deck. Kyle Seeger playing in front of the bag at third. Just in smoke up at first, so they're expecting the bunt here also. Kochman one for 12 in the series. And at the corner shows Bunt gets it down. It's a beauty league. Will throw to first, sacrifice execute, and defense as well. So lead at sacrifice is 1 4. Good job by Kochman. Good job by Lee to get that out. Perfect bunt by Kochman and well executed. Brandon Lee gets off the mound in good shape. Kelly Duncan, he was able to punch him out twice in his last two at bats. Brandon Lee would love to have one of those right now. Sure would. You want to make sure that he doesn't spike anything up there, and then Oligo can keep everything in front. Strike one. Mariners infield playing halfway. If they had a speedier runner at third, they play up. But with Santana over there, now they're moving Ackley back. Owen one to Duncan. He's over for one against Lee. Here's the pitch. Good fastball, 97 miles an hour at the bottom of the strike zone. Didn't get the call, one and one. Quality effort. So Katzman moved the runners up. He did his job. One out. And we're going to get a pinch runner now. For Hafner. Aaron Cunningham, local product. He's going to have to run for Hafner. Another set of wheels out there. That's the lead run. 1 1 pitch from League. Two and one. A lot different from last night when Lee came in and got three outs on five pitches to close out a 4 1 Mariner win. Well, last two pitches are at the bottom of the strike zone. Unfortunately, Brandon not getting the call That's where he wants to be. 2 1. Three and one. Boy, he thought he had that one as well. That one was inside, but you can see the other two pitches from the tracer look like they were strikes. Luke stepping off the mound, compose himself. Tight situation, three and one. The pitch to Shelly Duncan. Lost it. Faces are loaded. It's going to bring up former Mariner Jack Hanahan. They hit the center last time up. One for three. Carl Willis, the pitching coach, comes out of the dugout. Have a conversation with Brandon League. Make sure he's clear on the scouting report with Hanahan. See how they want to attack him. Again, typically Brandon against the left hand here. He's aggressive with his fastball early, and then he likes to go to his split. That'll put some pressure on Olivo to keep the split if he keeps it down in front of him. Anahan one for three against Brandon League. Bases are loaded. All of Indians. He got Santana at third, Cunningham at second, Duncan at first. Have not turned to tonight. This is where you want to get one. First pitch to Hanahan. 
Seeger can't get it. Tie ball game. Here comes Cunningham being waved around. Here's the throw from Figgins. The air melding. It's way over his head. It's 2 1 Cleveland. Going down to second is Hanahan. Kepler Ribbies reject Hanahan, and Cleveland now leads it 2 to 1. And this is an absolutely heartbreaking no decision for Felix Hernandez. Ground ball in the hole on the left side of the infield. Seeger, the diving effort, is not able to keep it on the infield. That is a tough break. Second and third now. It's Duncan motored all the way around. Second and third. Jason Donald. Strike one. They get up their closer. All star Chris Perez. Boy, I think that says it all, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Their guy could not have been more brilliant tonight, Felix Hernandez. Stopped by Olivo. Jack Hanahan, former Mariner, gets it done. Mariners in the bottom of the ninth line. Vitro, Smoke, and Seeger. Three, four, five. They got to get out of this jam. It's two to one with runners at second and third. One out. Field up close. Pitch. Squeeze was on. Well, the hitter missed it. Sure did. Duncan was about a third of the way down, and you saw the Jason Donald's head go, what? Watch Duncan take off on the pitch. And Donald swings away. I'm sure, he was surprised. A lot of times, if you put the squeeze on, the third base coach will tell the, the runner in third that the squeeze is on. But typically, the hitter has to give you a cue back that he was able to get it as Brandon Lee gets the strikeout. Big K there. I think Duncan's life flashed in front of him with that swing. I'll bring out Eric Wedge. Way to make a pitching change. So league faces six batters, throws 20 pitches, gives up the lead at two to one, and Lucas Litke will come on. Face Michael Brantley. Mariner offense gonna have to get something going in home ninth. Hey, it's a giveaway that is gaining steam or smoke. That is, it's Mariners Smokemotive train night. It's coming up Friday, May 4th against the Twins. Be one of the first 20,000 fans to pick up this Justin Smoke collectible. And we punch a ticket at Mariners.com. What Mariners going to have to shake it here? This is tough. Get your 
a number one pitcher, one of the best in the game, just brilliant. And your closer's been five for five. And hey, it happens. They hadn't given up a run until the, this That's appearance right. tonight. Is Litke taking over fastball slider? It's outside. He comes into a tight situation. Two outs. Runners at second and third. Four strikeouts in the two and a third innings he has pitched. Two and oh. Bottom of the ninth, he'll have Ichiro, Smoke, and Seeger. Way outside, three and oh. Chris Perez is set down. Close for Josh Tomlin. Eight strong innings. He started the ball game with Cleveland. Now they're going to put Brantley on. Kipnis hitting 100 off of left handed pitching, 220. Two out sets up force every eighth man to the plate here in the ninth inning. His hands with a fastball. Yep, Dale Scott, great look at it. Look ahead, 0-2. He has a chance to throw a couple of sliders off the plate away. He hasn't thrown him a slider yet. To the Kipnis trying to get out of it. Litke needs a big pitch. Two ball foul. Last pitch a breaking ball down in the zone. Let's see him get that pitch off the plate. Casey Cashman got the bunt down. After he got a big base hit in the inning. Nice save there by Oliva. Smoke. Good hop. Work to do. A blown lead. Ichiro, Smoke, and Seeger. As the Mariners going to have to rally here to pull it out in the ninth.
some way, somehow to get it done. People with their rally caps on. Turn your cap around and inside out, buddy. There you go. There's a few more rally hats right there. Hi, everybody. Angie Mentink here at the Ford Sports Desk. Once the Indians leave town, it's the Chicago White Sox that come in. The Mariners continue their trip through the AL Central, and it's Hector Noessi who will be the first one out for the Mariners. He won his last start against the A's. He's trying to stay perfect here at home. He starts the first of three. Blake Bevan is up against Phil Humber. Then in the finale, it's righty Kevin Millwood against the lefty John Danks. His brother Jordan Danks, also in the White Sox organization, but he's an outfielder, not a pitcher. All right, so let's get you back upstairs. Everybody's ready for this. Everybody's ready for a big finish here, Dave. Feel it. I hope you're right. I trust you're right. Thank you, Angie. Each of Smoke and Seeger against Chris Perez, one of the better relievers. We talked about it. Remember early in the game, talking about Phil Hernandez. You know, doesn't call anybody out. Hey, I tell you what, he's not going to call league out. I'm not saying he's no. going to, but I'm just saying how tough it is and how even stronger he's got to be after such a tough game here tonight. He was in charge. He was great. It happens. Yeah. He was great tonight. And no closer goes perfect all year. Although Papa Grande did it last year, and then he started this year for his first two. Boom, right out of the gate. Boom, boom. Coxman for the first out. Down here in the bottom of the ninth this Saturday. Salute to Armed Forces Day here at Safe Gold Field. Join the Mariners as we recognize our country's servicemen and women in a special pregame ceremony. After the game, 20,000 fans are going to get a commemorative military coin courtesy of Boeing. For more info, visit Mariners.com. Smoke looks at a strike. Go for three career against Perez. Like two. Couple of fastballs. Fastball 93 miles an hour. He'll throw a big sweeping slider about 82, 83 miles an hour. Oh, missed inside. There's Perez out of Bradenton, Florida. Lives in Tampa now. 6'4", 230. Turns 27 on July 1st. Fourth year closing for the tribe. That one way inside. Two and two. He's had his struggles this year. We showed you his ERA. It's over five. You get wild at times. Two outs here in the ninth. Last up, Cal Seeger. After missing with some sliders, comes back with a fastball at 93 miles an hour on the outside corner. That will throw it by Justin. A little bit late on his swing. Kyle Seeger with a double. His first time up in the second inning, one for three on the night. Rounded out to the shortstop and a fly ball out to right. Ball one. Blum times in the Kings court. Felix did his job. Offense didn't get him enough help. No. Well, you, I mean, you just. Working on such a small margin of error. That'll do it right here. Pop up left field. Shelly Duncan. This is as heart wrenching a loss as we've seen here in Seattle. Felix pitches an absolute gem. He doesn't get enough offensive support. Brandon Leak blows his first game of the season. Jack Hanahan, the former Mariner, comes up huge in the ninth. Cleveland wins it two to one. Really a shame. Felix, I thought it definitely his best start of the year. Maybe one of the better outings we've seen from him. He was dominant, had his back up against it, was able to pitch out of it. But unfortunately, the Mariners just get the one run. Not able to make it hold up. So Felix will not be a part of the decision, but he was outstanding tonight. 
His line is so good, it's scary. And such as, as we mentioned a couple of days ago, the vagaries of baseball. Look at that. Eight innings, a five-hit shutout baseball, striking out a dozen in 126 pitches, and he gets a no decision. And I think Eric West, you'll look back at this game and early in the game, a couple of situations with runners at third, less than two outs, and the Mariners not able to capitalize on it. They finally do. They're able to get Saunders to score on a ball that didn't leave the infield. But what a, what a great outing for Felix. He was pumped up after he came off the field in the eighth inning. And again, as you mentioned, Brandon League has been perfect this year up until this point. Tough one to lose. And the Tribe takes the series. White Sox are next. They're in tomorrow night. Right now, we send you out to center field. and Brett Adam. Thank you very much, guys.